What's up guys? I decided to do another video um, as a part two to my uh, video about the P1345 code, uh, multiple engine misfires uh, that I did on my truck. Uh, I did the video about a year ago and I'm still getting comments and emails about it. Um, apparently this was a pretty widespread problem and people are still finding the, the video useful. Um, getting a lot of uh, thank you messages and stuff from people who uh, have just recently seen the video and saved them a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble. Um, so I figured I'd do a kind of a part two to it and go over uh, a little bit more in detail of what I ran into with my truck. Um, with my truck it kind of presented itself in a weird fashion my truck would only miss when it started uh, under heavy load pulling my camper or on the interstate when it would go to passing gear and um, what would happen the truck would just basically go to missing like crazy check engine light would start flashing and I could let off the gas and bring the truck down to a lower RPM and the truck would clear up and then continue to run fine um, and I would go for another 10 or 15 miles until I hit a hill or had to pass somebody or whatever the truck would fall apart again and start missing light would come on so what I did um, I basically went through all the small stuff first um, that's how I was taught in auto mechanics in high school was keep it simple so mainly what I did first was the basic tune-up stuff cap rotor wires um, plugs uh, fuel filter uh, did all those things and of course you know driving around town 45 55 miles an hour it wasn't an issue it wasn't until I put the truck under under some pretty good load that I noticed the truck would fall apart again <clears throat> excuse me so do like everybody else jump on the interweb start looking around at multiple problems that the 4.3 uh, vortex have uh, one of the biggest ones that come up is the fuel spider the fuel injection spider um, so I went ahead and changed the fuel spider and it's kind of a, a pain but it's doable for most backyard mechanics to handle um, just take your time pay attention to detail and how the uh, fuel injector lines are run um, so they don't cause a problem and interference with the intake. Um, needless to say, same problem was still there. So then I went to uh, the next step, which was distributor replacement. So when I went to change the distributor, as you see in my other video, I had problems with the gears lining up. Uh, when I would drop the distributor back into place, it would not line up in the correct position. That's when I figured out that you had some have to knock the roll pin out of the gear, spin the gear 180 degrees, put the gear back on, and it will line up. Um, it's just luck of the draw as to who put it together that day and whether they were paying attention to how they were installing it. Um, but that was a big help for a lot of people and like I say I'm still getting comments on it it's been over a year so um, a lot of the guys that uh, responded to me were asking further you know what kind of problems I was having how did it present itself and what was the ultimate fix because I thought the truck was fixed because it did clear the uh, 1345 code it did not uh, fix the problem of the multiple engine misfire so, uh, I changed the distributor, and shortly after that, I took a trip to the mountains, pulling my camper. All the way up, it was fine, for whatever reason. Um, a week later, I come back home, and uh, the rotor button on a brand new rotor that I installed that came with the distributor actually broke the center tab off, lost fire to the truck, it shuts down on the side of 29. Not a good place to be broke down. So it took me a few minutes to figure out what it was. Thank God I had somebody with me. We jumped in his truck, ran to the parts store, got another one, put it on. Truck started. I make it home. 
still didn't have an issue with it misfiring. It's funny how it kind of comes and goes with that truck. I don't know how it can correct itself, for lack of a better word, uh, and come and go the way it did, but it did. So, I, uh, when I came home, um, I don't know, a couple weeks went by, truck started getting worse. It started doing it at 55. Um, small inclines, light would flash, truck would just miss and go to pieces, um, and it would hardly run, it was getting so bad. So, in the middle of all this, um, even before the distributor replacement, I did a compression test. It came out fine. It was good compression on all the cylinders, it was not an issue. So, when it started getting worse, I brought it back home, put it in the shop, did another compression test, and I had two cylinders that had zero compression. Um, I believe it was two and four, if I'm not mistaken. So you get digging into the web a little bit farther, and the 4.3, and I'm not sure about the 5.7s, but I know the 4.3s, have problems with the valves and the valve seats on the heads. Um, supposedly they weren't machined to enough uh, tolerance on the heads, or on the valve guides, and as it starts to get hot, the valves start to seize. Thank God it's a non-interference motor because it would have been catastrophic. But uh, that's what it was. So I pulled the heads off. I took them to a good machine shop uh, right down the road. And he actually did a valve job for me. Uh, and it was, in my opinion, a, a really good price. Um, and I looked at buying heads online remanufactured heads, whatever, but I'm skeptical of other people's work. Um, I used to install a lot of engines from Flightline, from Jasper, you name it, I've put it in. And I've seen a lot of problems with remanufactured stuff. I actually got a set of heads that were bolted to a motor, supposedly ready to drop in the car, and I pulled them off anyways just to check. And thank God I did. They had actually installed and swapped an intake and exhaust valve, put it together that way, and put the heads on the motor. I just don't trust going behind people's work like that, or just taking it on their word that they did what they're supposed to. So the cost of buying new heads or remanufactured heads versus the machine shop, I'll take the machine shop every day. Um, my local machine shop turned my heads around in two days. Um, the basic uh, valve job was like 240 bucks. With any more questions, which I love about the guy, he said, you know, do you want me to check the heads to make sure they're straight and not warped? I said, absolutely. He said, well, how about uh, pressure testing the heads? I said, sure, if I'm getting into it this deep, I want them done right. And it's like $30, $40 for each additional thing you add on. Um, he did the valve job, decked the heads, pressure tested them, even checked the uh, tension on the valve springs to make sure I didn't have a weak valve spring. I said, do it all. I want them right. You know, you only want to do this once. So that's what I did. Um, I got the heads done completely for $450, $460, which was pretty daggone close to the price of remanufactured heads online. Then I had to pay shipping. So, and I had them in two days. The guy was slow that time of year, and uh, it really paid off for me. I'm glad I went that route, because had I went with remanufactured heads, who knows what you're gonna get. Um, so I definitely suggest finding a machine shop that you can trust, that's got a good reputation, that will work with you, and uh, answer questions if you have questions. Um, it's a pretty good sized job, for the average guy, you know, at home mechanic, whatever. Um, if you're used to doing it, it's not bad. It's just like every other head job that you do on a car or truck. Um, so anyway, put the heads on, started the truck up, checked everything out, everything was good, and it solved the problem. It's been a year and a half. I have not had one single issue with the truck missing, and I've put it under some pretty severe uh, loads, pulling my camper to Bath County, Virginia, 
and going up Warm, Warm Springs Mountain is steep. I mean, really steep. And the truck did great. Um, I haven't had any more problems with the truck missing. No more lights. Took care of the problem. So, I hope this video will help you, uh, give you an idea, uh, more of what I experienced. And, uh, point you in the right direction if you're having the same issue. But at least maybe you'll know where to go with the, uh, problem and how to fix the problem. Um, because that's a big part of the game, you know, working on vehicles is the repair is bad enough. But when you don't know what you, what you need to repair or what the problem is, you know, is to begin with, that makes it tough. Um, so hopefully this helps you out. And uh, if you have any uh, comments or concerns or questions, uh, just drop them in the comment section below. Um, I would appreciate it if you click like, uh, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.